Welcome back to the Steve Gerber Show. The countdown so close now. It's been a long election season, it seems. And it's going to come down to the wire. Look, the polls are indicating that maybe there's an advantage to Donald Trump, but it's slight. It's within the margin of error. The real key is going to be who gets the people to the vote, to, to the ballot box to vote. That's really what it's going to be all about. Congressman Ralph Norman of South Carolina joining me now. Congressman, nice to see you again. Great to be with you. It, it's about turnout. Now, we've seen tremendous turnout for Republicans in ways we've not seen in the past. And I'm talking about early voting. I went to a Trump rally here just a couple of days ago in Michigan. And about three quarters of the people I talked to had cast ballots early. And only one of the 40 or 50 people I talked to had ever cast an early ballot before. That's a big shift, isn't it? It's a big shift, and I think it's all over the country, Steve. In South Carolina, in 2022, we had right at 564,000 early voters. Uh, now we're pushing 800,000. So it's uh, an enthusiasm, and people, I think, are scared, and they want to make sure their vote counts. And you're right, it's who gets to the polls. But the other, other big issue is they've got to be legal, and we've got to be prepared to fight uh, to make sure we uh, put validity to who's voting. Well, remarkably, the Republican Party, the RNC, Michael Watley and his team are on top of it this time around. They're not sitting around waiting for something to happen or to react to it. They're right on top of it. And I give you a couple of examples, one being Virginia, where the Department of Justice tried to say, well, you can't take illegal aliens off the voter rolls. The Supreme Court stepped in and said, of course, you can take illegal aliens off the voter rolls. And then in Pennsylvania, where uniformed police officers were blocking people from voting in Bucks County and elsewhere. And they said, wait a second, you can't do that. We're going to extend early voting by three days. Uh, so I'm encouraged by that, that the Republicans are in the field and ready to address these problems. Yeah, because it, this is basic. And I, I've, if I've heard it one time, I've heard, heard it a thousand times, Steve, people don't think their vote counts. They think there's some shenanigans that went on. Uh, back in 2020, and I think they want to make sure that every every vote you're a, you're a verified American citizen, not just checking the box. You've got to be able to show proof for it, and you've got to make sure that uh, you're from this country or you don't vote. It's that simple. So let me ask you this: uh, I don't know if it moves the needle or not, but but I think this is an election that could be won on the margins, and the margins could be very small in Pennsylvania, or Georgia, or North Carolina. And so when, when Joe Biden comes out and refers to Donald Trump's followers as garbage, which happened a couple of days ago, I think that might have an impact on some people. I have seen polling numbers out of Michigan. It's remarkable. Donald Trump is winning with men, but with young men, the numbers are staggering. He is pulling 70% of the vote of men 18 to 29 in Michigan. That, according to Mitchell Polling, I think that's remarkable. And I think when you call people garbage, that gets them to encourage a, kill, a few more of their friends to go to the polls. What do you make of that comment? Well, it shows how, you know, Joe Biden disdains and Kamala Harris, they just dis, dis, have disdain for the American people. Your average hardworking American, they don't have any use for. And those kind of comments, who would think that the leader of the free world would make that kind of comment, even cross his mind? But the other thing, too, that's playing a big part in this election now is people feel it in their pocketbooks. They feel it with the crime. They feel it with the illegals uh, that are on the streets now in every every city of every state in America. Yeah, and you know, they're going to do, do something about it. I was in New York City for the Madison Square Garden event, which, by the way, was a wonderful event. Not at all how it was framed by MSNBC or CNN or others. Uh, wonderful event. A lot of hope and optimism there. But I also had the opportunity to walk by a couple of these hotels that are in New York City, like the Roosevelt, which is occupied by illegals that get a free place to stay, debit cards, free phones, free food. And I can tell you, every person I talk to that's a cab driver or an Uber driver or working at the hotel or other places, man, they don't like that a bit. And they're all Trump supporters. Every working person I met, man, woman, black, white, didn't matter, every working person I met, a Trump supporter. Well, and they have every right because Donald Trump is somebody who's not just talking about what he's going to do. Look what he did the four years that he was in office from 2016 to 2020. He did everything that he was, he delivered on his promises. And they know now more than ever, we need that. And uh, it's, it's the American people's tax money. It's not the politicians to dole out to illegals. And all the things you mentioned are true, but add airline flights in there. We had three flights that we know of came to Spartanburg, South Carolina. And uh, that, along with everything else, you know, free tuition, the Democrats town, uh, you know, you don't have to be legal to vote. 
and in the in the crucial vote that we had on the Save Act, only five of 212 Democrats uh, voted to verify that you are a U.S. citizen. So right, two is is a big difference in uh, in what's going on now. There's a big difference in what Kamala Harris uh, has not done during her administration and what Trump will do. Now you mentioned Greenville there just for a moment in passing, and I, and I want to come back to that for a reason because the people in Western North Carolina, still looking for people that are missing, still trying to rebuild, getting very little help from FEMA and others. Trust me, we just had a crew on the ground there for several days, just in the last few days. They brought back the most heart-wrenching pictures and people saying, FEMA's not here helping us. We're doing it ourselves. In fact, they're punching through roads and getting things done. It was really remarkable, Ralph. Early voting in Western North Carolina is ahead of schedule from 2020 or 2016. Those people may have lost their homes, they may have lost their businesses, may have lost their cars, may have lost loved ones, but they have not lost their ability to find the polling place and cast a ballot. I think they're angry. I think they're a bit they're angry. An they're angry and they want their voice to be heard. Uh, and, and you look at the money that when when they landed in, when, when the president uh, landed in, um, in, in Greenville, uh, Mayorka said basically they were bankrupt, uh, didn't have any money in FEMA. Well, that's because 110 million of FEMA funds went to shelter programs to assist migrants. 104 million went to New York City for asylum seekers. I mean, the list goes on and on, Steve. And American people have had enough. And the the those who have had everything taken from them in Western North Carolina, through no fault of their own, have got a resiliency. That made this country what it is today, and I'm, you know, it's it's amazing. And people are telling heart wrenching stories of people that have lost everything, including loved ones that they can't find, but they assume they're dead. Uh, people seeing other dead people bodies in trees and cars. That's but right. The spirit, the spirit is still there. The spirit is still there. In fact, one of the uh, people we saw uh, earlier today on the program, people being asked by neighbors, "Can you help us dig a couple more graves?" Can you bring the cadaver dogs down the road a little bit farther? We think we might have a body down this way. And it just goes on and on. And, but these people are resilient, they are tough, and they are voting. Uh, so if you're not voting and haven't voted so far, you have no excuse. Now, having said that, early voting is setting records. It is. But uh, I still think Republicans are going to you know, come out on Election Day. I'll give you the last word, Ralph, because the, the, the bottom line is fight, 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 vote, vote, vote. I'll give you the last word. And the, the, the big overriding question, if you like what's happened in the last four years, which I, I can't think of an American that would, versus what happened the four years of Donald Trump, uh, you will vote for a change in an administration that has taken this country uh, in, in directions we've never seen before. You're going to see an outpouring of support uh, for Donald Trump, and he's going to win office, and we're going to, you will see that he will turn this country around in a short four-year time, time frame. Yeah, and he says he's going to do it with tariffs. I mean, he keeps getting attacked for these tariffs, the same ones that the Democrats kept, by the way, after he left exactly. the office. That's right. <clears throat> Excuse me, Congressman Ralph Norman, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you for being here. Yeah, it's my honor to be with you, Steve. Thank you for what you do. There you have it.